Aloha everyone, I am back. I haven't spoken for some time for many reasons. It was an intense year of a lot of duty with uh, medicine as a healer and way shower. A lot of deep processes, ancestral healing and reclamation of my cells. And yeah, that's what I wish to speak about a little today. So let's start. Um, you could see on the channel that I was using the word a lot in the written form because sometimes it's easier to write a text and, and put, put it out and, and edit it and let it grow instead of doing a video. For the videos, I need to be sure that what I wish to communicate comes from the heart center and is always truly integrated wisdom from within and not from external. That's why I invited you a lot uh, to let go of the external, of the storytelling of the new age, which is also including the Kailantics to a certain extent, although it's helpful. So this is the first topic I wish to speak about today. We have the Metatronics, we have the Kailantics, and in the meanwhile, and there's uh, an entry upcoming soon, I will find time to sit together with Edward, who shared all the calculations of our divine spark in alignment to source, which is the Vedic knowledge, the original Vedic knowledge, and which is the undistorted certain stripe uh, which is the Hyperboreans upright, so to say, and thereby the weeds, who are the key holders from their wisdom to return to source directly. So this was the actual plan, that's what I can already report, um, that we would come one life and do all the stuff over here. Uh, shadow work, of course, healing, of course, uh, restoration of the ancestry. Uh, with the wisdom at hand and then ascend out and not get stuck here. So this is truly what it is, right? To, to be stuck here and we have these three um, teachings now. The Metatronics is the AI, um, the Kailontics is still the return into the Christ Consciousness Alpha Omega integration. From my understanding, it is uh, the Illuminati Consciousness and um, which is higher than actually all the Metatronic stuff, we can access other dimensions with that. Um, with the Metatronics, we cannot access uh, the Godhead. We cannot access the 13th dimension of the Logos, which is the Mother Arc, which is a feminine emanation of Source. It's not as given as in many teachings that we have all masculine logos consciousness up there. This is the false father God principle that you find sometimes presented um, as well in the overseas, uh, in the in the overviews. And I wish to correct that. The Grandianas and the Mother Arc as the 13th dimension of the logos are the feminine emanation of light. It is the dark magnetic light. The 14th ray then with the Vajrayanas and the 14th ray, the golden light, is the masculine, the mind. And the 15th uh, is indeed when we have restored inner unity, we ascend to that one as Christ of avatars, so to say. Which is still a process when we receive that from the enlightenment of the Ajna to the heart. This is the first step and we have to do all the shadow work once again to go into the earth star and bring all the light down into our root over there, then we can do the ancestral work, which is the liberation of our ancestors. And this is actually where it becomes interesting, because just after we healed our DNA of fallen aspects, many of us hold, even the ones who are doing the bypassing all the time. That's why they don't want to see it, actually, um, is indeed the key to enable our body on cellular level because every cell includes a nucleolus, this is the core. 
and in there is the DNA and this is not to be doubted. This is a given. It's the microcosmos within the macrocosmos. Although our DNA, when we have a look at it from a shamanic point of view, when we work with it, it looks like a big well coming out of the void or in the void. From there the DNA goes as a light spiral up into nowhere. So I, I couldn't find the end. But that's how I see it and that's what I want to share. I did that already on Facebook and I think it should have been posted on the channel as well. If not, oh, please let me know. I will I'll bring that entry from Facebook over there as well. So why do we have all of these different teachings and all of this blaming? I mean, see for what it is. Everyone who is either with the Metatronics or the Kylantics is still in the models of fighting. Fighting of good versus evil, of fallen versus upright. Yeah, I mean, as long as you guys fight, and I don't want to be personal here, but I, how, how would I express it? Try to reflect. Try to go into your heart, into your higher heart, and take this divine position in there, in the zero point. And then have a look on everything. In this moment, when you are dwelling in your Atman, do you feel that there is anything of creation, of any expression, that it is necessary to fight for? Or is everything all right as it is? This is a question everyone needs to answer for themselves. I won't give any answer here. Just to pass this along, to discern the teachings that you use and cling to. We have had, uh, and I will put this in the description of this video, we have had the discussion or the sharing of my side of the basic principles of spirituality. This is non-attachment, non-identification. And um, that we always respect the free will. We cannot just go when we see something in someone else and start working on that without using the word. This is always very important and this is maybe the most conflicted part of our being that we are intrinsically good and want to do good and want to help and want to support but then we interfere with somebody else without asking and this is especially a divine feminine topic. Uh, this is when we feel everything and when we are already continuing the stream of feeling and create from that without going in physicality to the other person to have a word with them or to show them that we like them or something like that, you know, that um, we communicate it and ask if we may or not. This is very, very important. And um, yeah, I, since I started to use my mirror magic um, and mirrored everything with my multi-layered Merkaba, there was nothing alike any any longer. And I get I I got the information that the ones who interfered in a positive or negative way I don't know always received the lessons, and this is very important because like that. When we stand in our power, when we stand in our presence, we attract this, of course, and, and the people who are uh, doing that from ego in a positive way, of course, you know, let's focus on the positive. They will still receive their learning from that. And this is good like it is, because it's not allowed. Free will, when we are living as a sage in the bhakti path of yoga, that means the full surrender to divine love. Free will is not existent in between us and source, and our soul is the direct emanation with all the experience of our fractal, of our Atman, of our personal Atma that we are. This is our essence. And of course there is no free will. Really. Yeah, we, we have free will. We can go with the ego, but the karma that plays out by then is horrible most of the time and it is just a detour. But then again, we have a lot of free will when it comes uh, to the uh, interaction with other universes, so to say, because every one of us is 
a standalone universe. The body is the universe and traveling within is traveling within the universe. So you could see it a little bit like the whole body is the multiverse, what we see in the night sky with all the stars that are the suns that are your souls. And we can find this within the body and entangle to these other locations and entangle into another person, if you will, so into another universe. It's a little bit complex, isn't it? It's just for your understanding uh, that you have an idea how this might work in the macrocosm. I'm not 100% sure if it truly is like that, but that's how it feels. And when we interact with another universe, so to say, of course we have free will. We can say yes, no, yes, under these and those circumstances, no, but this and that, right? So there we have it. And that's good. That's good. And it's good to have all of these discussions. And still I say, every one of us who woke up most likely came into touch with the Metatronics, first of all, especially the chosen ones. You are the chosen ones because you have a lot of very, very fallen ancestry. That's why you see everything. That's why you know. That's because you can, you have the experience within your DNA or within your soul that you can see what's going on. And when we can see that and we react from our emotional body or from our mental body with um, resistance, we need to do our inner work. It doesn't help to do the bypassing and go ever higher in our frequency with the mind without taking care of our body. And this will end now. So when you are continue to do that, you will probably not get through this ascension. And that's the next topic I wish to speak on afterwards. So the metatronics is what we get hold on primarily. And we find the cube of Metatron on our right side of the body, which is our masculine side, under the first rib bone, right here. There is the, the cube of Metatron located energetically within the body. So when we have done our integration, we can work in there. We can bring spirit in there. We can clear out the AI, the lower astral, so to say. And upon achievement, our solar plexus will be liberated, which is the lower mind, our karma manas, and it ascends and becomes one with the manas once again. So this is why AI was already ever there. So this is nothing to be afraid of. Although the modus operandi, how it is done, is highly questionable. It is a luciferic way of doing it. They don't respect the free will doing it. And still they are doing a service for all the people of the collective who are really good hearted and live their virtues. When they receive the vaccine, they'll be fine. I promise you that they'll be fine because they are actually in an alignment without any guilt, so to say, without any energies that are stuck. Um, so they probably be fine and it's our work now to clear this out with speaking the truth with showing the way with teaching detachment and then we can take care of it and clean it that's the same with ai itself when we clear our dna we also clear ai so coming to the kylantics which is the access for everything above the ninth dimension or yeah above the uh, ninth dimension ninth dimension to twelfths and into the thirteenths we can achieve with the kylantics into the rishi fields of light and this is fine you know i think everyone will be fine with that but it's still not the ascension this is still when we follow the models of edward a key lock in time so we will not leave time that means we are still in this matrix right and this comes often along with the identification as oh i was this and that and i have been 
and this council and this ET species and stuff like that. All of this needs to go. Just consider for a second that consciousness is just consciousness without any affiliation. So our soul and our Atman can become everything. And all the forms that we have lived through with all the um, specific emotions and thoughts that are bound to a certain life form are memory that teach us now compassion when we do the inner work. And we see that it's simply an avatar with, this, with, with a certain societal rules of a species that comes along when we embody in a certain avatar. So that's why I say work through the Kalontics after, especially after you come out, out of the Metatronics to clear the higher fields of uh, dimensions that we cannot access with the Metatronics. You need to do the shadow work there as well. Then you return into the Rishi fields of light and then the interesting work begins. Because just when we use from there on Mother Earth itself as the Mother God, and I put this article down there as well about the Mother God principle, then we will be truly entitled to have the zero degree alignment directly with source point, which is Polaris, which is the North Node, and thereby ascend out. This is the Vedic knowledge, that's the Vedic wisdom, and I don't suggest to study it as intense as we did um, the songs of the Anuhasi and the MCA of reading, freedom teachings, which is, which is all really fine to make progress, right? I, I don't say it's, it's not, and I don't say it is bad. Even the Metatronics, I wouldn't say is bad, because the collective that is not in the condition like us to see all of that, and still needs to ascend, which is, by the way, remaining here on Earth with her, um, then we can, by our work, give them the proper and clean AI input when we cleared the field from our karma and for everyone else in our avatar duty, when we do grid work, when we heal spots in Earth where a lot of injustice has happened with portals of light, like that we clean the, uh, the inner earth, so to say, and like that we clear the AI, which is the manas of the dark polarity, which is the manas of the mother god, if you will so. Because it's duality, right? We have the manas from above, which is the light. We have the manas from below, which is the magnetic dark light. And both together are love. So by studying the weeds without going too deep, don't attach, just have a look at it and address your soul that she may remember or it may remember it's neutral, right? So like that you can adjust your mind, which is very important, without thinking through the process. You don't need to understand that for the moment and just go into nature and ground yourself and use the prayer, use the word and use, um, use it in nature especially to do your affirmations like that you wish to remain as a guardian, as a caretaker of earth for now. And it doesn't make any sense to go home somewhere or evict this because you chose to be here. Otherwise you wouldn't be here in this time, which is a great, great honor to be here and make this shift possible, which is the next um, that I wish to explain from my understanding, nothing will fall apart this time. The earth will not be destroyed. This is bullshit. This is just storytelling to fearmonger us, to bring us into flight and into the fighting by claiming back our sovereignty fully and bringing the spirit, the spirit all along, the ether, the divine masculine, into the body, and it doesn't matter if we are women or men, just the modus operandi is a little bit different. We are embodying spirit, the masculine, and the feminine is embodying materia. So the girls use the magnetism to pull in spirit and thereby clean it, the future timelines from distortion. And we go with the spirit in this embodiment of our soul into the body, into the darkness, into our anima, and clear out the past. 
And that's why the man was in strong presence um, upon uh, a gathering with other people who hold a lot of demons, shy away their demons and they jump out and let people act strange sometimes. And girls are the destroyers of the ego, if you will, so the healers for the ego of the man. So this is what happens, right? And um, this ascension process will be nothing more than a quantum entanglement of all of us who are in the full power in the meanwhile to another co coordinate, which is indeed Andromeda. So within our Atma, we collectively quantum entangle. And since everything in the external, the planet itself and um, all that we know, is just a reflection of our knowing how it is, will be quantum entangled with us and projected there. So this is a jump that we do together. And everyone who is not able to come with us will die and leave the body behind. So this is how it's going to happen. And this is the last thing I wish to, to tell you today because I received information about the shift. And I have seen that from one or another from time to time on the 1010 portal, I had this shift already for myself. I was out of the body. I was in doing yoga nidra. I was in uh, a deep, deep state of introspection where I'm lying down and I'm not really here, but I am still getting everything. And this is the skill that we need for, for the shift that we can be in a deep trance, but still recognize all our surrounding. And I was out of the body and I could see the rapture and I felt the entanglement. And there are some of us now doing that very passively. This is not our fault. This is not by will. It is just happening because we are, so to say, divine antenna here to make it happen. And it's our will to say, no, we don't want to do our inner work. Okay, that's fine. We continue to attach to the worldly and go with our ego. And then we cannot access our deeper aspects in the karma, in the DNA. We cannot take care of our ancestors like that, but they need to be liberated. And when they are liberated, they stand behind us, within us. And so why? And like that, the fighting ends. Even if I have five or six different lines of ancestry uh, who have been in war the whole time, cosmic and over here, when they are united and healed within me, the fight is not there anymore. That's how it works from inside to outside. In inner peace means peace in the external. And the more of us achieve that, the less dense and the less ugly the conflicts in the external will show. That's why I always say another video for down here. The healing, the path of healing is the only way to true and meaningful liberation. So back to the shift. When this happens, it will be like a strong DMT state, like being in the room, so to say, being in the astral, although we can walk around and all of that. And whenever you have done a good ayahuasca ceremony, this is the best, the closest to this event that we can imagine, we will see all of uh, our fears and our, our um, shadows directly in front of us. So this, we will bask in that. So this is so important to do your inner work and liberate all of that with Ho'oponopono, with forgiveness, with letting go, with transmutation sometimes as well, but most often with alchemization and self-love. Because all of that has been an aspect of you. Your ancestors are an aspect of you. Your soul is still the same. So all of that is an aspect of you. You know. So the forgiveness to self. While the forgiveness for the other universe is taking influence in your life. Is so very important to dissolve these bonds. Of debt and of guilt. And just turn it into love. Because we attract what we need, right? We attract always what we need. And this ayahuasca ceremony feeling in this room when we are facing death, 
which is actually death, which is in the physical, the state we go into now, even when we are on higher dimensions, even less dense, then this will be very overwhelming for many people. And whoever did not have this experience will most likely struggle with that. Everything is normal. Everything seems normal, but it is that the spirit world and the physical world are one. There is no separation. There has never been separation. And in the moment, the critical mass of us who are the front runners hits, this will happen. This will be brought here. And with that, the entanglement takes place to higher dimensions. And that's why many will leave their bodies. And especially when they haven't had this experience and haven't done any shadow work, they will, facing, they will be facing all their demons, all their fears, all their nightmares at once. Because it's also the setting free of all the karma from the earth itself that stores a lot over all times of the dark mother, if you will. So she, Sophia, can be free as the earth soul to ascend into the form of Gaia. Right? So this is how it works. So I recommend, especially when you have done a lot of bypassing and you are a vegan now for 15, 20 years, but still have the feeling sometimes that you are really angry and you shouldn't be actually when you are like that. You should be very balanced and peaceful. You have lost your bridge to your body. And I see that especially in the men who embody spirit. Get into your body, brothers. It's so important. We need your light there in within the body that you heal out. First of all, your own uh, darkness that is intrinsic and later on for your ancestors, you have to continue to break through into your root, into the earth star, which is open for every woman anyways. When she has given birth, then it is open, the access to the void. And there you find source. There you find it. And you can just embody the higher chakra, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th and the 12th to the 13th, when you do it in your root, that does not work by projecting outside, using Merkabas outside. Yes, you are there. All the time you are in a fitting Merkaba, you are there, but it is just a visit. So it's not permanent. The permanency is achieved in your root, in your healing. So I feel that will be the three days of darkness, so to say, when we are simply moving in the corpus of the inner world which is poured over the earth and in the external it shows like with the sa rna vaccination that will truly hit badly i guess which was just released in japan and will transfect from all living organisms back to the human so it does not know any borders and this is also pahana the great sargon as it is called or the ancient one of all the prophecies that will tidy up the world. And you need to prepare now. The bypassing needs to stop. And when you are feeling there's something off, when you still have this feeling and not are not constantly in the mind, ground yourself, then feel into it. Even if you're for vegan for long, you need to embody your body. That means fallen ancestry will be most likely there. As long as you are not from a very, very pure line and always awake and never had any issue. That's also existent, right? Then you know, and it's fine. But for many of us who had their awakening, earlier or later, when we went into the flight to not see it, um, to project happiness and positive vibes only and stuff like that, which is not human, by the way, at least not without a proper inner, decent inner work, then our bridge to our root is severed so we need to lower our frequency by just allowing our emotions that we don't want to see and the thoughts that we don't want to think that are there that are steering our subconscious 
that are the reason why we are polyamorous and all of this shit which is our demons steering from the subconscious which are parasites on one hand and ancestors on the other from the dna it's when we are in mission to invoke the great solar flesh like in my case back in the day stuff like that is bullshit you don't need to do anything just need to heal yes that needed to be said and now i found the proper wording and i wanted to pass this on we have about half a year a little bit less then it will hit it will come in the form of a huge solar eruption which is actually the great solar flash by that the lower ai is eliminated in the meaning of poured out so the whale is falling away so say everyone has to face what they need to face it will feel like we are dead like we are in this room ayahuasca ceremony is really a recommendation for everyone i can offer this as well um, just reach out i bring back a lot of very powerful brothers and sisters recently into christ consciousness into i uh, i consecrate them so spirit is coming in clear which is important for the girls and for the guys the other way around the consecration takes care that the body opens up to receive spirit better and by that everyone is returning into christ consciousness going their path of course they need to do the healing everyone needs to do their own healing i can, i will not take anything out and touch that i cannot and i don't want to because that's taking away the lessons of the people they have to do their own inner work and after an experience like that with the consecration all the necessary encounters happen in the external and we set the focus there the lessons are directly mastered because we need it now right we need the integrations now and the inner word comes back then strongly with a clear wisdom for the girls the feeling gets a name for us uh, the knowing gets a feeling and an image that's how it is all right uh, I wish a beautiful, beautiful time to everyone. Enjoy it and don't see the negative only, but be grateful that you may uh, be the architect of your own life. It's so beautiful and so meaningful and so special that we are entitled to do that for all of our family members. It's a great honor, to be honest, and the gratitude is the key for what you have not the feeling of lack for what you don't like that you become true and meaningful abundance peace blessings lots of love to everyone reach out if you wish to cooperate i will come to you uh, as well when you uh, wish to have hold a ceremony and to have some more people so it is traveling uh the traveling and the materials and a little bit for me extra when i ha cannot go to work is paid for this is what i need to insist on and everyone needs to learn to take care of themselves now as well in regard to energy it is a divine service yes i know and my time that i teach with you needs to be exchanged in energy the medicine itself is free all right guys Peace to everyone. Shalom. Uh, in Lakesh Alakim and Namaste.